three, two, one, 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 two, three. All right, <laughs> we are live, Jeremy. Are you ready to go live, Jeremy? Are you? Are you? Know. Are you? Are we even live right now? I don't even know. We're, we're live. We're live. We're live. We're live. <laughs> we're live on Amazon. We're live on YouTube. Uh, if you're on YouTube, check us out. We are at Pixel Stabbers at YouTube and we are also on Amazon. So, hey guys, thank you for checking out our live stream. We are Pixel Stabbers. This is Jeremy Chan. My name Hi. is David. Jeremy's been shooting photography for 15 years. He's been doing wedding photography for 15 years. One interesting thing about him is he's also a digital artist on top of becoming a, a wedding photographer. So not only does he take pictures, he does post-processing to make the pictures really pop. So 15 years of doing that and myself, 10 years of wedding photography too. Also, one cool thing about Jeremy is he's actually been a judge or he's He's always been a judge at WPPI, which is a wedding oh, professional you portrait. You don't want me to judge a picture. I whip people apart. That's why they exactly like me. <laughs> because you're very particular, and that's why we have this "Ask Me Anything" today because we just want to talk to you guys. And feel free to ask questions in the comments below, whether it's on Amazon Live or whether it's on YouTube Live, and we will entertain your question as long as it's photography related or if it's funny. That's cool too. So ask us any questions, but we got stuff to talk about too. So. We're just gonna have fun and talk. We're mm -hmm. gonna keep it real mm -hmm. casual. And we're gonna talk about some gears here and there, but feel free, everything's on. It's when I'm it's everything. So it's everything. If you chime in, you have a question, yep. just put them in the comment. We will yeah. answer them. Yes. As much as we can. You know, we're we're not that knowledgeable that we know everything. So no guarantee there. <laughs> You're modest. We don't know everything, but we have fifteen years. Uh, wedding photography experience. Well, 10 we years always have our personal opinion, right. so that's there. <laughs> right. So that's why we can contribute, and you know, there's always knowledge to go around. If you have something to tell us, we would love to hear from you too. Because yes. um, as tell arrogant as this wrong. guy you sounds, wrong, he's I mean, actually not wrong. arrogant at all. He'll listen to stuff. He, he's not arrogant. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Why do you even consider that I'm arrogant? I don't know why I say that. I said you're not, even though he might look arrogant. He's definitely yeah, not. Even bring that he's up? not. He's something that he's that, not. He's yeah, totally not arrogant. You're, you're not. I'm just assuming that people might assume you are, but I'm telling them that you're not so that they don't assume, right? Why would people assume I am? <laughs> Alright, let's not worry about that. But anyway, he's also, uh, he's also won awards at WPPI too, so when, he's, he's got a good experience. Anyway, so one of the things I just want to talk about real quick to just start this off is, what's your favorite camera? Like, do you have a favorite camera, Jeremy? Uh, currently right now, I would have to say it is the one I'm shooting right now, which is the Fuji Film XT3. Uh -huh. But I am tempting right now because they just came out with three camera, which I am torn apart. That mm -hmm. which ones to get next because it's so fun. Um, now you gotta know me. I'm not the, one of those who actually buy camera that has to look professional. Mm -hmm. I don't. I rather use some amateur gears and do professional work. I think that is more appealing than having like a full professional gear. And yeah, of course you could do professional work, but yeah, you can have an amateur camera, like something less, and you do even more. I think that's more appealing, honestly. Yeah, I think so. so uh, it, it's challenging. It's more challenging when you are locked and you have to make what you have work. It's exciting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. So when I'm debating on um, either the, I was gonna be a focus on the Expo 3 from Fujifilm mm -hmm. because of the flip LCD. Yeah. Um, but then again, one, once I did my research, I realized that, okay, because the cool thing about the camera is also it has a hybrid um, wheel finder. Mm -hmm. So it could be like a actual optical wheel finder yes. or a digital wheel finder, right? right. EVF. Yeah. Now, I found that, that if you put a 35, oh, I'm sorry, to Fuji, that would be 23 millimeter lens. In yep. front of it, your mm -hmm. optical will be perfect because that's what the optical is. Yes. But let's say if you I put like a 56, uh, 50 to 140 different focal lengths on it, that yes. that optical will find it will kind of like kind of useless because it's, <laughs> you can't see what you're, you're shooting. Right. And that's what my direction kind of switched to the mm, X100V, which ah. is a fixed lens with a yes. 23 millimeter. So both the optical and the digital will work perfectly all the time. Yes. The only thing that you can really do is change lens, but they do have adapters, so they could actually put like a 56 mm become mm -hmm. like portrait lens and adapt in front of it. So you will have a 23, which is equivalent to 35-ish in full frame, mm -hmm. and also 85. Oh, actually, no, I'm, I take it back. It's 50 something, 55 in full frame. So, yeah, so that's the choice. So 
the X100 yeah. right? Yeah, and it's a very beautiful camera too, oh, yeah. seriously. I, I love how minimalistic it is. Like you're going back to the point that once you're constrained and you, 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 you can use like a super professional camera to do the job, but if you come to a wedding using this, it's exciting because you're challenged to using one focal length. You gotta move around, you gotta shoot and document what you, you can, right? Whether it's a, a wedding or whether it's a street photography or whether it's a birthday party, it's just more interesting when you're constrained. And this camera, like you said, you're constrained to one focal length and the lens does not come off. It's permanently fixed to this camera. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting because you, have, you just have to work with it. So, I mean, the people see you taking picture with this camera, they were curious, yeah. like, hmm, I wonder what kind of angle or picture they're getting, you know? Right. Oh man, but the design of this camera, it just, it's beautiful. Are you I, ever seeing this? It's, yeah. yeah. Dude, I did my research, of course I yeah. know. <laughs> it, it's, it's a beautiful camera. It's a good size too. Yeah. And this is a good history camera too. I think if we have other videos, we talk about this. This yeah. camera is the core of all Fuji film. Buff yes. sensors. Yeah. That, I mean, everything starts with this camera, so it has a huge history. And Fuji is actually, Fujifilm is actually really, really proud of this camera. Ooh, yeah. And it, it's, the funny thing is, it's more like a professional toy, if that makes sense to you, right? Well, it's kind, okay, so if Leica is like Germany mm -hmm. kind of gems mm -hmm. of the photography world, then Fujifilm is probably like the Eastern like that type of stuff. You think about yeah, that. I would agree. I mean, they they fo both focus on not the technology, not the high tech, mm -hmm. but it's the craftsmanship in the camera itself, and also the value they add into it for your photography. Yes, yeah, and and I, I say it's like a toy too because if you're shooting a professional. Yeah, of course it's a toy. Right, <laughs> right, it's right. right. Fun. <laughs> it is. It is. You can you can definitely yeah. But just just the fact that you can't change lens on it, and um, just that simple fact. That it's called going back to basic. Back then, yeah. photography you can't change lens anyway. Man, all those thirty-five millimeter. That's you true. You can't change lens. Yeah, but except in today's modern day and age, everyone that's shooting a professional event has a long lens, has a shallow lens, or, or rather a wide lens, right? So you have to be on the same par with them. Like today's those are day working, and age. Um, those are working cameras. Right. Therefore, that's, that's why. why this is a toy camera. So we're on the same page, right? It's nice to have yeah. as a toy camera. No, it's more like artistic camera, I'll put it this way. Okay, say. I like that. In fact, I think it's cool if you bring this to a wedding, even if you're shooting like a paid job. You can do all your stuff, but you can also have this as a second camera. It's cool. It's a conversation starter. Yeah, you can. And it's you fun. totally can. Yeah. You can totally do that. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, we have other videos that talk about this camera in, in detail, so they can always check that out. So this is the camera you're thinking about, the X105, not the X-T4? Yeah. I thought you were going to say the X-T4. Well, X-T4 is a working camera ah, to me, so yes. I want something fun. I mean, how about you? What would be yours? Me? Well, I'm waiting for the Canon R5. It is... Never own a Canon, never going to buy one. Well, I, I wish they never. I would never say never. I, I take that back. <laughs> the Canon R5 is going to be one beast of a camera. Um, yeah, but they came late though. It's coming late. It's it's. We don't even know when it's going to be released because no, it is... not that kind of late. They're late in the game. Yeah. While all the beers camera is pretty um, advanced and also mature right now, and now they come. Well, yes, um, sure, um, <laughs> but you know, come back. Really? <laughs> there is a comeback. There is a comeback. And Canon's has always been at the edge of the leading edge of things in the very beginning. Like the 5D Mark II. Remember the 5D Mark II? That was the single camera that brought DSLR videos to the world as we know it today. Because of that camera, people were able to record high definition quality cinematic video using interchangeable DSLR, DSLR lenses to make amazing videos. Yes, and I give you that. That That's opened the sure. door to everything. So they were ahead of their game then, and then they established their brand, and they became the pioneers of this. So once they have that title, the champion of this category, they actually they took a back seat. So they, they milked it as much as they can by not yeah. providing the best technology, but still selling their cameras. And you know then, what that I call that? That's called corporation thinking. It is. 
it is. Uh, but yet, people still buy them, right? Because the cool thing about it is they'll give you enough stuff to tease you. So like you want to, you you wish it had more, but it has enough that you'll buy it anyway. And then they save that feature that it should be in that version for the next version, so it gets you to buy the next version. Honestly, I, I remember. I, I think remember um, back then when shooting, I wasn't using Canon, but then yeah. a lot of Canon shooters kind of complain like, like, why are you keep like coming up different model but keep lacking something and they come up with the next day. Like, always. And they always like, oh, that's the strategy they make for sales. You know, that's it how is. you think you buy. <laughs> that that I mean, truthfully, that that is is exactly what it is. And finally. Finally, Canon releases the R5, which please let it be true that they're finally coming back to lead the pack and be ahead of the game again. This is this generation's 5D Mark II. It has everything in the latest image sensor, image processor, mechanical shutter, silent shutter, 8K raw video, 4K 120p, finally in body image stabilization on the Canon camera. It's got the famous dual pixel autofocus that everyone loves about Canon cameras. It's finally got dual card slots. I mean, this is a simple request from a lot of professional photographers. And mm -hmm. you can see this feature in almost every camera on all the other manufacturers. But no, Canon did not put it in their EOS R or EOS RP. Which kind of sucks because I like the EOS R and EOS RP because it allows you to use these new lenses, the EOS RF glass, and those lenses are just amazing. But I can't use it to shoot professional because it doesn't have dual memory card. So this camera finally has it. So here's a quick, I actually haven't seen this video, it's like about a minute. Let's check this out, let's see what we got. This is like a spinning shot of this camera. And it's got it's the flip out screen. It's a boring camera, look at it, it's all black, and there's no design, just like the OSL, DSL, man. It's simple. It's something that you're familiar with. It, it doesn't make sense to change the style or change the look and feel of a camera if it's something that you're already comfortable with. You can focus on taking pictures, not fidgeting around with learning how to use a new camera. It's something well, that's they're, familiar. Well, they're doing this to please the Canon users. Yeah. Not, not the non-Canon users. <laughs> True. But Canon, oh, there, there's a good angle of the screen. Oh, dang it. <laughs> you see that screen? <laughs> it's a flip out screen. So you know like mm -hmm. Canon's always like you said tease us like they'll have cameras with a perfect flip out screen but they don't have like 120, 120 frames per second or they have a flip out screen but they have no external mic jack or they have a flip out screen but no Im in body image stabilization. So basically uh, this is the camera that basically pack everything together so to yes. you know everybody have so Please That's let it be true. Yes, and it'll make vloggers happy. It'll make cinematographers happy. It'll make professional photographers happy. It, it you is... know, I might be wrong, but just yes. kind of share something because you know I don't sure. go to conference quite much. Yes. Like just before the pandemic, I, I went to a couple yes. of conferences and I yeah. talked to industry people. Yeah. Uh, well, we sat down. We just kind of BSing a little bit here and there, but then <laughs> yeah, some of the topic comes up. Like say for example, Canon, right? We yep. all agree that th they come in late with this L5. To be honest, yes. they're late. Yes. While uh, Sony and well, Nikon, they just put it away. Nikon is like late, late. <laughs> Don't even know where they are right now. But let's yeah. say Sony and um, all the other mirrors basically is pretty advanced, and mm -hmm. Sony has the best technology right now, regardless. Okay. And at some point, that the mirrorless camera is more mature than before. Mm -hmm. And it's also at a peak right now that you can't really do much different than it. So mm -hmm. something new will happen. We'll and see. what we're saying that what Canon did right now, they, yes, they this is a very, very nice and very good mirrorless camera. Yes. But unfortunately, something new might come and then become old news again. Yes, but that's what for, we're predicting within the industry. For now, I think it, there's it's still regardless of a great camera. You can capture mm -hmm. a lot of images, of it, but. The thing is, because of technology, are we still capturing image now or something else? Is it 3D or, you know, who knows, right? But you, you, you never know what the outcomes are making. Yes, but I would say, yes, there might be something right over the... coming up next, right? That's like revolutionary, that changes photography completely. Mm -hmm. But if that's the case, then this might be the best camera before that. Right? Oh, regardless, this is yeah. like good camera, no, yeah. no doubt about it. it. It packs in all the technology that we have but I'm, today. I'm judging it on yeah. if they are the industrial leader, they should be leading rather than following. Mm. That's my point. Okay, good point. 
maybe there's nothing around the corner. I don't know, but no, because this is what happened. For Canon, they have so much different divisions, yes. and also to invest in making a camera, it requires a lot. So they probably plan like maybe five, fifteen, ten, fifteen 15 years for to create all that. And suddenly mm -hmm. another company come in with something new. They can't switch to astrology. They have to keep it going. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly why why all that happened. Same thing goes on Nikon because this is how corporation works. Once yeah. they plan a 10-year plan, they follow. They don't change yes. even though the, the worst collapse. They just keep going. It's how well, stupid it is. Well, okay, they're not stupid. They have, to, they have to go with the prediction because they have to able to respect the shareholders yes. uh, predicting how they're going to make. So they have to follow those plans, but they don't follow the real world. Well, yes and no. Uh, because they're a big corporation and a lot of decisions have to be made as a corporation, things do turn very slow. But mm -hmm. if the whole world changes, I'm sure they're going to skip the next generation plan and adapt something to it. Or maybe they'll uh, incorporate it into the next generation. Although, maybe not the next one, but the next next, right? Because they're probably the already next working next on they're the slow. next. Yeah. Got, like, they're, they're slow. So yeah, they're probably the already next working next on the next one. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. yes. So that's the, that's why like, if there's a new company, like for example, Blackmagic Cinema, that's small and that can adapt right away to changes, we might see them take on a new revolutionary change, whether it's it, th like uh, 3D recording or whatever. Can you imagine it is. when Sony yeah. first came up with the A7 you know, yeah. full frame? Yeah. Uh, mirrorless? Yes. If Canon had this L5 came out already, I mean, I, yes. I'm pretty sure they have the technology. I mean, it's pretty yes. there. Yeah. If, do you think Canon, Sony can be who, what they are now if back then Canon had L5? Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. They choose to make money over um, being Maybe a leader. That. Yeah. They milked it. And that, that may be a strategy that they wanted to do. Um, or maybe they saved it. So when they, they're done milking it, milking it, now they can just bring, it, bring the best out again and take That's the lead why again. People, for, for people who love cameras and yeah. photographies, you don't see them do Canon, Nikon, or whatever, those like majority working brands. They yeah. go with Leica, right? And yeah. in Asia, they go with Fujifilm. Do you know why? Because those two companies, they are branded that they're focused in making a good camera for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not trying to make money off of you. Because I know for a fact, Fujifilm uh, for the camera digital department is only 30% of everything. Mm -hmm. So they're not making majority money, but that is the passion yes. to make camera for us. And yes. as consumer, we love that. Yes. We don't like that you just make money and keep taking our money every year with the new model. We actually yeah. want something good. I totally agree. Oh, hey, we got a new visitor. Check out the dual vibe. Awesome stuff. Oh, hey, thanks. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah, let us know if you have any questions. It looks like you got a beautiful picture there. I, I wonder if you took that picture or you have a professional take it. But if you have any questions about photography, that's what we're here for. We are, well, Jeremy's been a professional photographer for the last 15 years. I've been a professional wedding photographer for the last 10 years. And we have a lot of collective experience about wedding photography and photography in general. So if you have any question at all, ask away. We'll be happy to answer them for you. But right now, we're just talking about just random gears that we like, cameras that mm -hmm. we're excited about, what's a work camera, what's a professional camera versus a hobby camera and just different camera technology. But feel free to ask any questions. And um, yeah, so we're wrapping up this question right now. So this is my uh, yeah. camera that <laughs> I want to get. It's the R5. Uh, if I can't get this, uh, the other camera that I would like to get is the 1DX Mark III. But at the time being, That's it's, a big one. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's too expensive and it doesn't have the flip out screen and it's not mirrorless. So yeah, the R5 is really what I want. And I'm just waiting for it to come out. It, it will be a nice camera, really nice camera. So yeah, that is the answer to my question. So, do you have a question, Jeremy? Um, I don't, but a lot of people ask me questions, so I can share some of that if you want. Ooh, do we have questions already? Um, let's just say here's an interesting one. Okay. Now, we have so many technology which is advanced right now, like for example, a live mm -hmm. view. Yes. You see an LCD? Yeah. And you click, that's the picture, right? The live yes. view. What you see yep. is what you get. Yep. And then for the flash, we mm -hmm. have TTL, which is auto, right? Yep. So people do ask, is the basic photography skills still relevant to able to help a person take good images? For basic example, do you still skills. have to learn app stop? Like yes. The, and do you still have to learn how to focus? Well, there's an auto focus. 
Yeah. Do you still have to learn about exposure? Huh. Auto pretty got they could auto it, right? Yeah. So do you feel feel like that for 2020, 2021, mm-hmm. 22 in the future? <laughs> yeah. Do we still need to learn all that basic to able to capture a good images? So to capture a good image, no. And in fact, the point is already proven with the latest iPhone, or actually iPhones like five years yeah. ago. Yeah. Right. I find that the iPhone actually take better picture than camera at some point. It, if you don't know how to set up your camera, it can take better pictures than your camera. And in fact, the iPhone has technology in there that allows you to take better pictures too. Because if the processor is so fast, it can actually take a bunch of photos, compose them together, yeah. and have like a dynamic range that no DSLR camera can produce. Even if you take RAW and you do it in Lightroom, unless you take a bunch of pictures and process it, and crop things out, and crop other things, and kind of combine it all into one picture. But like, that, the that's iPhone the, can that's do the that. Thing. Yeah. Like, like a, like a cell phone can right basically anyone using a cell phone can yes. take a good pictures yeah. but not anyone can pick up a camera and take good pictures even uh, though they ex- experienced ones you mean like they can't take a, pick up a camera like this this is like the e, uh, EOS M50 but you can just put it in auto mode you can take pretty good pictures already right uh well i said when i said good picture i guess yeah. i could be, be more explainable like for example mm-hmm. hdr pictures you know, yes. you, there's a lot of things that require software to boost the yes. pixels to get those. Yeah. If you just have a camera, you yeah. can't get it done. No. But if you have a cell phone, you can get it done. Yes, that's very true. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people just put like Instagram filters and whatnot. And you know, you may, it, it, it might be like, okay, you don't think they're nice, but they can make a picture look really nice in their own perspective and they'll get a lot of people liking it too. So you can do a lot with just your phone these days. So to go back and answer your question, you don't need basic photography skills to take a good picture, especially if you're using like a phone and particularly an iPhone that's designed to make it very user friendly. So you pretty much just point and shoot and it does all the dynamic calibration for you, gets a focus for you and gets the best picture given that you don't have crappy framing. So that's my answer. You don't need to know basic camera technique to take good pictures. So do you think someone need all the basic technique to run a photography business? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. When you take pictures for a photography business, I think so. You don't think so. Do, okay. Here's a better question. Do you think there's a lot of photography business out there that only do not know all this stuff? I would say... I don't think so. I think every photography studio owner has to at least know how to shoot in manual. Has to. There's no way. Because even if you have like well, an iPhone. Okay. Yeah. You heard about the term natural light shooters? Yes. So there's a lot of studio owners do not know how to operate a flash. That I agree. But they know how to shoot manual. Yeah, but that's not enough, is it? <laughs> well, but that's camera basic in my opinion. Like, you, at least you know how to shoot manual. But yeah, they're able to shoot in any environment, not just the open, bright, have a lot of light environment. So, yes. you know, one thing being a professional is that mm-hmm. you are there to help your client to solve a problem. Yes. Uh, in use in some way, you also embed your artistic sense in there to mm-hmm. let that problem more beautify. Is there even a word beautify? Okay. Yeah. I think so, right? It's okay. a word. Mm-hmm. So, you meaning that, let's say if someone hire you, let's say if you're a photographer. Yeah. That happened to be personally one time. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I live in California. Mm-hmm. And when someone say, let's, they have a wedding in um, Napa. Yeah. I assume it's going to be outdoor, really right. sunny. Yes. <sighs> that venue is actually underground. <laughs> oh, boy. It's in a cave. Oh no. So there's no light whatsoever. You really oh, need to know no. your lighting, like get your artificial light to get anything in there at all. Yes. So when that kind of situation comes, and I actually know a lot of people, uh, a lot of photographers back then, because there's like a couple of those venues in Napa. Mm-hmm. Yes. And when they pick up that job, they pass it to me because they can't handle the job. Wow. Wow. I, I think um, those people. As a photography studio, you should be able to do those jobs. But now, but that's I, that's like ten years ago, I would say. Okay. But now, because of technology, you get live view and yeah. the high ISO. Even yeah. though you don't use flash, you turn yeah. it to what 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 yeah, 000, yeah, you get something. 
Yeah. Or if you just pop it on camel flash on it with TTL, you get something. So that changes. Yes. You don't need to learn it. <laughs> yes. That's my, my argument right there. Yeah, you don't need to learn it. Um, I would say it's still, it's still, I would say as me judging another photographer because I actually know it, I think they need to learn it because they, you're- They should learn it. Yes, yeah. But you don't need to know it to start a business. Agree. You don't need to know it to start a business and if you're careful and you are upfront and honest about what you know and what you don't know, that's actually really good too because if you realize, hey, I don't know how to shoot in low light, but I know how to move them outside to shoot pictures or I know how to open a window to get better lighting in here, then that's half the battle too. Like, yeah, but here's the interesting yeah. thing though. The clients yeah. don't care about your so-called skilled or how many awards you have, how right. experienced you are. Right. They look at the result, which is yes. your photograph. Exactly. Yeah. So if you can and that work leads to the next it. question people ask me is why yeah. is a signature style so important? Hmm. Yeah. So what what is a signature style to you, Jeremy, and why do you think it's important? Signature style to me is yeah. different than most. People, okay. Okay. Some people. Okay. Here's my definition. Buying a preset, an action, and apply to your picture, or have someone else edit your picture is not your personal style. Agreed. That's not it. That's yes. not it. And you can just. And then there's a myth. I call it a myth. Some people mm -hmm. say it's legit. I call it a myth. That is, hmm. you just look at other people's work, um, learn from them, inspire from them. When they say inspire, that's a great line between inspiration and copy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they always have make excuse that okay, you know, because I'm still learning, so it's okay for me to copy just a little bit. Mm. You can you can copy and adapt it to your style. I would say that's okay in my opinion. To me, a personal style should start not from your photography, mm. but within you. What mm -hmm. is your interest? What do you yes. like? Like for example, I like movies. I like mm -hmm. paintings. Mm -hmm. So I incorporate those elements into my photo mm -hmm. that become my style. Yes. Now, do I get it overnight? No, because this personal style, essential style, should become should be organic. Mm -hmm. And it takes time to build. Yes, it's not like you take a class, you get a workshop, you learn from someone, and boom, next day you get a personal style. It doesn't work that way. That's right. not it. It's right. not, that's just like buying a preset, embedded picture. Oh look, mm -hmm. I got all color created. That's my style. <laughs> yeah, that's not yours. Right. That doesn't. That picture doesn't say that's you. Right. So. That's yeah. me. That's my <laughs> I'm I, think, that. I think a style is good, right? Because like if you just Google a bunch of image, like for example, for example, I'm looking for a, 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 a wedding photographer, right? And I look at the venue that I want to shoot at. Like say I'm, say I'm already married, but say I want to get married and I want to get married at San Francisco City Hall, right? And I'm looking through a bunch of Google images for photographers. If I see your image, I can say right away, oh, this is Jeremy Chan's photography. That is a signature style because it's distinctive from all the other ones because all the other ones either look the same or they have um, slightly color, like vibrant color or a little sepia, but whatnot. But your style is very unique, right? You have a texture, you have a grain. Um, things look very moments-like. It's a very unique style. So I give credit to that because that's one way you can step you're up your game for the competition. And I think style is very important uh, to do well in a business photography, uh, to do well for your business photography, for sure. Well, that's the second part of the question mm -hmm. that which we related to if a person needs to know about all the basic photo skills mm -hmm. and also why is a signature style important? Say, so because of the technology, the mm -hmm. how to of how to take a picture, yes. how to do something right. is eliminated. Yes. Basically, everybody has an even uh, bottle field. Let's just put it that way. Yes. Yeah. So how can you, besides using branding and marketing, okay? Yes. Your force hobby, how can you stand up from other That's people? It. Yes. That's where your signature personal style comes in. Yeah. So and a it, lot of photographers, they might not know how to you operate. Okay, mm -hmm. they know how to take pictures. Yes. They just might not know how to operate the gears. Yes, but they they know enough to take the pictures, mm -hmm. but with style. Yes, yes, that's the new era of photography right now. It's not about back then operate a film camera, right? You got to yeah. know how to focus. You got to know, right. know how to put in the film, and right. then you got to know what focal length, when to use what, right? Right. Now that they you don't know you don't need to know any of those. You can still take the pictures. Yeah, absolutely. And what's left that will be artistic sense left. Yes, you got to be artistic about things. 
Yeah, you have to step up the game and you have to differentiate yourself from the rest. And that's also how you can charge more. And that's also how you become not just a price negotiation point, right? Because, for mm -hmm. example, again, I, I take it back to wedding photography because that's all I know. But like, if I was searching for a wedding photographer, I would pretty much look at all the wedding photographers in my area, look at their blog and say, okay, these are all reasonable pictures. Let me just start calling them and see what the best price they can give me. And I'll just pick the one with the best price because they don't have anything that stands out. But now if you're in the mix, that's a whole different ball game because now I can say, oh, all these photographers, they look the same. So let's see if I can get a price range. But for Jeremy's photography, his style looks really different. I like the style. I'm willing to pay more. Let me put him on a different level and let me negotiate a different uh, price with him and not put him in the same batch as all these other photographers. So it definitely sets you apart in terms of creativity output, but it also allows you to make more money too because you're in a different playing field. Totally different. Well, the, mon the money is one part. I mean, if you yeah. are running a business with photography, then yeah. yes, that mm -hmm. really helps. But at the same time, uh, you really need to know the business part, which is the branding and marketing. <laughs> yes. That, that's important because of course. if they can't see you, they don't know how good you are. So yes. it's kind of have to find a good balance. Oh, uh, yeah. But, and, you know, this is the pro professional even making money with photography, though. Yes. But what there's, you know, to be honest, if I tell you that for the professional field, it's probably maybe. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Guess mm -hmm. maybe maybe 10% of the whole world mm -hmm. who people love or have cameras. Mm -hmm. I mean, 90% of people don't do business with the photography. Mm -hmm. They just have fun with it. Yes. Right? And for those people, if they some of those who actually will enter a competition, there's a lot of competition out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. From professional to amateur to journalism, all that, right? Oh yeah. Tons. If you have your signature style. Yes you actually do way better in competition too. Oh yeah. I mean, that's that's your thing. And, and it, it sets you apart too because like when you're a judge too, you're looking at all these pictures, they're all the same, but their signature style is unique. It will wow them. And you automatically have a one up against the competition. Because mm -hmm. those judges, like I've been a judge, so mm -hmm. I can say about things like this. We've seen enough. We've yeah. seen everything. You can't really wow me unless yeah. you're really wow wow. <laughs> So, um, they, they, okay, do you believe something, someone keeps saying that there is no, nothing new under the sun? Um, some people say that, I disagree with it, but Me yeah, too. I've, I disagree. I've heard it. Yeah. People just, they, they make an excuse that they copy, to copy people. Yes. That's what I'm saying. They keep saying that there's nothing new under the sun. Say, so, uh, no, I keep saying something new from time to time. It just, you can't create it because you're not good enough. Or, or, or you don't know what it is because it hasn't been created yet. But oh, you haven't seen it yet. Yes. Yeah. I I think. Oh man. I'll, I'll go back and I use example. Back in like I forgot what year. Like maybe a hundred and fifty years ago, right? Uh, they were thinking about. Um, Are you that old? <laughs> no, no. But like this, I, I'm not that old. But I heard about the story. I think like 150, 200 years ago. Anyway when they decided to make uh, patents, right? So that people can protect their property. You know, patents? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Right. And then the discussion is like, why do we even have to worry about patents? Everything that needs to be discovered has already been discovered. But that was 200 years ago, right? At that time and age, that's what they think. Just like right now, if you think that way, it's true too, but you don't know what you don't know, right? You don't know mm -hmm. if later on we de develop a, um, a sensor that will detect viruses and you can see viruses before you get close to them, right? So you don't get sick or whatever it is. It, anything can happen and there's so much more out there that we don't know. Like there's space technology, there's alien technology, right? That's way far beyond us too. Like there's just so much and that's just an extreme. But to go back and take it down to your level, of course there's stuff you can do to your style that people haven't thought about. It's just, it makes it unique, right? You might have a style that reflects around uh, anime, right? You might be doing wedding photography, but now you mix it with anime. Or maybe you like politics a lot. Not that everyone will like politics uh, included in their photo, but you might have a, a flair of politics in your photo, whatever it is, right? There's um, a lot of those. <laughs> there is? If, if, if photography? But mm -hmm. what, whatever it is, right? You might have a style, and again, that's called niching too. Like you can you can have a style that is a particular niche, or you can have a style that's just unique and looks different that people want. And whatever it comes up with, may, maybe it, it looks nice and it 
goes viral and everybody likes it. Maybe you try it and that style doesn't do really well. You might want to adapt it and move, move on and experience it. But yeah, I can say, I can just write down a list of five, ten different ways I can di have a different style and try them. I, I, I yeah. totally agree that a style is very important and it's not hard to come up with a style. You just got to be creative and uh, learn some basic photography so that you know what you can do so that you can come up with your own style. I think a lot of people got stuck in their mind is that yes. they, when they say create, it just produce an image. Yes. That, that, that was that. That was it. And when the camera itself can actually, or even the iPhone, or cell phone, mm -hmm. can produce an image, right. they were like, okay, so what to do now? Yeah. You know, right? Yes. So they, the, the camera itself did my job already. So yes. what did I do now? But if you if you follow the tag, I mean you follow the tag. You have your channel. Oh yeah. Tag, you tap yeah. here. Yep. So you, you know how the technology is far. Okay, let's not talk about all technology because I don't even know all that. But just within digital imaging. Yes. We are not even close to where we can be even further. Like, uh, we have virtual reality, right? Yeah. VR. The yes. AR. Yeah. Hologram. Yes. There's so many things we have not, um, you know, get into yet. Right. Yeah, that, there's tons. Digital mirrors camera is not even like the beginning of, of all this. Okay, now, and then you 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 know one of the software we talk about all the time, Skylab, Skylab's Numino 4, yes. they have the AI, yes. all that stuff. Oh yeah. So on the technology side, all this AI technology and data basically mm -hmm. help us do all this already. So the how-to part to do all this technology, we don't have to. It's oh, yeah. come on to how to, as a creator, Yes. As an artist, yes. what kind of style you want to create? I think that is a decision you have to make rather than how to expose the picture. Yes. How to come. You don't have to know all that anymore. Right. <laughs> right. The machine is for you. Yeah. And you, you, you were mentioning Skylum, so I just wanted to bring this up. This is Skylum's oh. demo here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's using AI and you can use it to manipulate pictures, like put things inside mm -hmm. a picture, and it, it uses AI so it knows what's a sky and it'll crop it out for you. So when you replace it, it looks very believable. It'll let you edit portraits, uh, detect the eyes for you, detect the lips for you. So you can just make the judgments by moving sliders. You don't actually have to mask out anything. So technology like this takes your photography to the next level and allows you to be creative uh, much easier. So once you have tools like this, then you start thinking out of the box more, right? If you don't have tools like that, sometimes, yeah, you might be limited saying, okay, well, there's everything has already been discovered. I can't be creative. There's nothing else out there. But no, uh, sometimes <coughs> what stops people from being creative also is like the tedious task, right? So for example, if you want to do something the in post-processing. Yeah, the grunt work. <laughs> All right. So if you want to like uh, do something in post processing to make your pictures stand out more, whether it's to make the background sharper with more details and make the people uh, like a, a, a lighter, desaturated look, or whatever your style is, you think about it and you're like, yeah, but that's gonna take me so much time to do one picture. But with a software like this, it allows you to like really easily like. Like here, here's this example. You can just put like a rocket ship in your pictures, really easy, <laughs> right? Know. They or went like, crazy with that. <laughs> yeah, or, or your style can be like you you take pictures at these places that always have amazing skies, but you would think, oh yeah, it's very hard to replace the sky. But no, with some some stuff like this, you can replace the sky very easy. Um, so while we're talking about this, this software is available down in the link below. It's like a hundred bucks. It's less than a hundred bucks. So for a price that's less than like a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens, which I know every photographer should get. Um, if you don't have the lens, you should get that lens. But you know, aside from that lens, anything you buy for photography costs more than a hundred bucks, unfortunately. But this software here, it works as a standalone or it works also as a plugin to Lightroom and Photoshop. It's under a hundred bucks and you can do a lot with it. And just kind of leading back to your topic, it allows people to become creative and come up with their own style because of software like this. I will add into this because I'm, I'm I'm a true believer and supporter of company who like genuinely want to help people rather than make money off people. Of course, they have to make money because they have employees and they have overhead. Of course, they have to make money. That's what the business is all about, right? Yes. But at the same time, you got to put in the heart into it, making make things for people and yes. also thinking from the consumer side, right? Like right. for Fuji films, the Leica, they make yes. camera to to the to the to the fact that we I love the camera. Like just holding it, it's a, like a treasure to me. Not yeah. a working camera. 
Yeah. So yeah. they they build that into that the product. Same yes. thing goes on Luminal Four. Okay, Adobe is a working software. They make money. I understand. They charge mm -hmm. uh, what a monthly fee, yes. right? Yes. So for professional or for working wise, yes. yeah. I mean, I make my money back. I could pay for the sub subscription. It's fine. Yes. But to a lot of people, why would I want to? I, I'm not doing photography as a, my career. It's mm -hmm. just for fun. Mm -hmm. And now, why would I want to pay something that constant paying, right? Yeah. So Lumina for fall about that. So they only yes. give you like one time fee. Yes. And within there, rather yes. than you fuss around with the Photoshop or Lightroom and spend yes. an hour on an image, yes. they give you a slider to play with AI oh, yeah. and help you retouch image really quick. So yes. they fall about things like that. Yes, the professional will say, hey, that's not professional enough. But like, like I said earlier, Mm -hmm. Only ten percent in the world do professionally. Yes, you gotta think about the majority. With ninety percent of people, what are they gonna use, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they can definitely use this. And I think one good example of that, uh, just as you mentioned, like real estate agents, they don't take pictures professionally. But dude, if they add some skill set to take pictures, they can take their own marketing pictures and. It makes a lot of difference in the selling of the houses or the listing of yeah, the houses. Yeah, I don't like right? that idea. That would take a job away from us. <laughs> Think about it. Well, okay, so, so say that at the, at the ten percent already that thinking about doing that professionally, right? But mm -hmm. now with the software, you can take a picture, but you can change the sky, you can enhance the structure, you can sharpen up the details, all with some sliders that's really quick. And then again, this gives it a style, right? Because you can look at all the MLS listing and look at all the one pager, but when you see one picture that has a unique style, you're like, oh, that's Jeremy Chan's real estate agent. See, right? And you, you, you have like a, um, a natural gravitation towards it because you trust um, agency that's that's putting out this MLS listing or whatnot but again a style is very important whether you're doing it for your real estate or your professional business or your hobby it's you it's it's awesome to have a style because that defines you and your creative talent that you put into the picture and makes yeah, the picture yeah if, if that real estate agent had to take the the own pictures then he's not a very good agent he should be busy doing other things and taking pictures <laughs> that's debatable i think i, I i'm i'm Yes, I think you're right, but I think the other way because I think that someone that does a really good job of what they do, they should also know all the facets. Facets is that the right word? Uh, the different faces of their business, right? Whether it's the photo work, the marketing work, or the listing work, or actually talking to client or getting the leads, mm -hmm. they should know a little bit about it, even though that they can hand it off to their different counterparts to work on, and they can focus on what they do the best. But it's nice to have a little bit of everything and it doesn't hurt to be able to take pictures too because say you're at a house and you're just there on a visit you can take some pictures and already have pictures instead of scheduling time for the photographer to come take the pictures right it's nice to have skills even though you might not be the only one using it but anyway, i don't know we're digressing a quite a bit from your question about creativity and style right i think we kind of cover did we miss anything did we cover most yeah, we pretty much covered it. Um, I think you're one of the ambassadors for Luminar too. And I, I always... Yes, I, I am. <laughs> yeah. So like, where are you here? Oh, there you are. So I always, I always like to read this quote that you um, have for this tool, Luminar, right? And I, pretty, I think we pretty much hit it already by talking about it, but here's what you, you wrote. So emotion is a major factor when it comes to creating storytelling images. With the help of Luminar's AI technology, photographers can now fully focus on the emotional and storytelling part rather than worrying about the technical part of how to in their creative process, aka the grunt work, right? Mm -hmm. So I really so like when that. I when, when you read this, you understand, right? Because I have I have a lot of problems that when I, when I share this to other people, they yeah. don't they don't want to believe it. They don't want to what? They don't want to believe it believe it that like they don't accept this <laughs> they, it, it depends on where they are because this is what i'm talking about like back then mm -hmm. when i you know previously i was just talking about how some of those basic ways they create is about mm -hmm. getting the pictures that's yeah. creating them but i'm i'm thinking about beyond that they can't oh, yeah. think beyond that no it, it's 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 a mindset 
right? You have, you have, it's, it's, it's not easy. Um, let me, let me get a good example to really illustrate that. You can take a portrait um, out of camera and it can be really great if you set up the lighting perfect, you have the background perfect, you have the model in a perfect position with the right emotions and everything. But you can mm -hmm. only do so much with perfect lighting and perfect shot out of camera. But post-processing allows you to take it up one another level, a couple of notches up. And that's something that you simply cannot do out of camera. And here's a good video that, that shows it. I, I really like this one where this is a travel photographer who travels uh, in this example to Japan and is able to take a portrait. And you can see in this video that the portrait is nice, but what they do in about a, a, a minute or maybe realistically like five minutes, uh, moving sliders around, they can make one portrait like this. I think it's a great portrait, but look at the result. Before and after, it's just mind-blowingly different, right? And mm -hmm. that's something that you just can't do out of camera. So people have to realize that that is a value added, that a value that you can add to your pictures and they'll take it to the next level. And normally to do something like this takes a lot of time, aka grunt work. So that's why people don't do it. Photographers, like especially myself as a wedding photographer, I don't do this to every picture because it takes too much time. But with something like this, Lumina 4, it's a tool that allows you to make these amazing manipulations really quick and simple and it defines your style and it puts your photo at a way different level above everything else. Your photography is elevated. You know, some, someone will actually argue about that. I could do that in camera, just have to wait for the sky to turn that and put in different filters and long exposure, wait for one more. I wonder how long would that take to get that picture in camera just to get yeah. that right. <laughs> and by the time you can get everything dialed in, your model is tired, right? Or, or, or at that moment, your model is cold now because it's like the sun is set. I'm cold. Now she don't have the energy. She's not vibrant again. So, I just feel like that the technology is changing this whole industry. Yes. But the people in it don't want to change because they will lose value if they change. That's honestly, the way honestly, the world is always changing. And if you don't change with the world, you're not going to do well. No matter what you do in what business or even work, life, relationship, anything. The world changes mm -hmm. and you have to adapt. Uh, you just have to. And if you're saying... You don't tell me that. I'm, I'm adapting. I'm changing. You just yes. tell a lot of people that. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm answering your question. I'm not saying you, you personally. But like, yes, I'm telling those people that don't want to change, that don't want to use post-processing, that don't want to look at stuff for Luminar that can make their photography a whole nother level above. Um, they need to realize that the playing field is different now. Back 10 years ago, any picture you take in an event is breathtakingly amazing but now your guests the guests of the bride and groom can take their iphone and take amazing pictures so the game is up a notch so you need to up your game to be above the typical norm if you want to stand out and do well in your art do well in your craft and make money in your business or just make amazing pictures the competition is rising that's of that's, course yeah. making a picture making an image is not it's not hard right now it's easy no yeah, like we said, iPhone can take amazing pictures. Honestly, like I can give my five-year-old niece an iPhone and she can take a really good picture. Um, probably better than if I, I know. use my DSR, right? At one point, my wife was like shooting something with her iPhone and I was shooting something with my camera and then she got way better image than I do. I was kind of bummed, like, damn it, I was, yeah. I'm supposed to be a professional here. <laughs> why is why I was having it this way? Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's very true and very real. So that's why I think people need to realize it and step up their game. Because you can take a great picture with your iPhone, but now, Jeremy, if you take the same picture with your DSLR and you go into a software like Lumina 4, oh, you, yeah. you can take... I'm kick yeah. their butt. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can definitely kick their butt. You can, like, look at this, before and after. Like, see how, how, how sharp it can get? You can enhance the detail, stuff like that. Like, you can't get with a, an iPhone. So, mm -hmm. definitely... It's a great software. It's a definitely yeah. great software. Yeah, for sure. So, what's... um? We got about another 10 minutes or so. You want to bring up another question or you want to just kind of... Uh, okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, okay. So, yeah. let me ask you this. 
Yes. We're in kind of in between this pandemic, right? Yes. Now, that's not, we're not world changers here, but mm-hmm. we're talking about photography here. So do you feel that photography will change pros p- pandemic from before, Pro? from now? You mean after? Pros. After. Yeah. After post, the pandemic. Post, post. Post. Post, oh, sorry. Yeah. Post pandemic. Uh, for sure. I, uh, 100%. In, in what way, though? Well, again, I'm going to say from the wedding perspective, because that's what I know best. I the wedding's think, changing. We're talking about events. Events all cancel. <laughs> events are canceled, sure. but, but when they come back, they're still not going to be the same. We're not going to have no. big event packed with people anymore. You can't have a dance for full people. It will take at least several years at the minimum for people to get comfortable doing that and if they want to because now now things are different we might not ever shake hands again in our whole lives right because people how, might really okay. back then with the 911 incident how long does it take for new york to recover do you remember mm, i think that was pretty quick i don't remember you know new, well new yorkers are like right there right so yeah. they can pick it back fast yeah. but we talk about it's not just one city it's a whole world right now yeah. going on yeah. So that's a whole different ball game right there, and you're right about that. I mean, even though by law the country is open up, yes. uh, but social distancing because yeah. of this, people were kind of skeptical about you know going to a big events. So I would say um, weddings, conference, yes. workshop. Oh yeah, conference those, and workshop. And what? Th- those will be. I don't think anything else. Yeah, we're, ball we're, games. How about football ball games, games? Yeah, basketball games. All that. Yeah. Oh, or, that's even, change. or even clubbing. Did you hear about the, the South Korea situation with clubbing? So, no. Itaewon, a city in uh, Korea, recently uh-huh. uh, opened again, right? For business. Yeah, so, yeah I know that. Yeah, and so, so um, one person got, had the coronavirus and went uh, oh, no. to different clubs. That one night, that, that person visited three different clubs. He, so he went in, danced with some people, affected all those people, went to a different club, danced with some people, affected all those people, went to a different club, affected all those people, and oh. then they all started affecting other people. So by the end of the night, tons of people got affected and they did contract <laughs> tracing. It's like, yeah, this one person. Dang it! So now, now they realize. Like, zero. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a, it's a second outbreak all over again. So. Even if we plan to open up again, we can't. Like you said, those conferences, those uh, weddings, those events, ball games, like, you can't have them anymore. Uh, or you have to do something very different, like very spaced out seatings or virtual seatings. It's going to be changed. It's going to dramatically change. And wedding uh, and photography is going to be changed because of that. I think street photography wise will change. Two people will go, well, I don't know. Street photography might, might kind of remain. People just. Yeah, street photography on. will be the same. That's fine. Yeah. Portraiture, if you go to go to some studio and to get a portraiture done, then um, you know, you have to go, go to some other stranger studio, then that'd be the same. It's kinda of iffy. Um wedding is definitely changing. Wedding, wedding will I think change they the will, most. it will go for a smaller wedding at least, I would say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And probably more outdoor is rather than indoor because you know the air and all that is yeah. probably a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, so more outdoor, which is good because you know a real lantern light shooter. That's, that's <laughs> every year. It's yeah. much easier to shoot. Yes. And um, you don't have to stuck in a room with breathing other people's air, and mm-hmm. so that's a good thing. Um, but to a lot of photographers, they tailor to the big wedding to make money. Then they have to adapt and change because that's yes. not coming back anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. And I think you you mentioned this in our previous talk too. Like in, you have to adapt to it, and one way to adapt to it is the idea of pre-weddings will be more dominant in America mm-hmm. because normally they are not so dominant here. So you do pre-weddings. How do you think pre-weddings yeah. will be different post-pandemic? Um, I've been trying to push pre-wedding the culture in the US, but mm-hmm. in the older generation, you know how the culture of Western is, the bride not supposed to let the groom see her in the wedding dress. Ah, before the wedding. Yes. So that doesn't reply. But now we're talking about 2020. Mm-hmm. And the younger generation don't really follow their rules anymore. No, it's just that we need to be able to educate them. You know what? Because this is the good arguing point: is doing your wedding day, you don't have time to take beautiful bridal pictures. And you're stressed. But you're not relaxed. You're stressed. You want to actually enjoy that day rather than yeah. go spend time taking picture with photographer. Yeah. You want to spend time with your family and friends. Yeah. All Why your are guests. you wanting a way to take picture with photographers, right? For like an so hour. So do that right? beforehand yes. or after. 
Yes. So that's whether either post wedding or pre wedding comes in,、mm-hmm. and you got much better quality wedding、mm-hmm. image to hang on your wall.、Mm-hmm. Why not? Yes. Right. Yeah, and then so now, this is the other point. Yes, and now with the po- post pandemic,、uh, I think more people will actually want to do that, right? Because it's less risky, risky too, because you could have smaller wedding or、yeah. intimate family, yeah,、like、maybe twenty.、Mm-hmm. I think back in the last two years, they have、mm-hmm. something called like mini weddings, which、mm-hmm. is around. Twenty people, yeah, and they even go up to all the way to the mountain top to have a officiant there doing all that beautiful Ooh, scenery. Oh, that's like, so cool! Very、yeah. nice, very nice. So I think that's coming back. Yes, actually, that not coming back. That's always there, but that will be enhanced. Yes, um, because in U.S. we have a lot of outdoor place, so、yes. why not? Yeah, doesn't matter. It's not California, LA. They have a lot of places like this. You can、mm-hmm. do like whole small wedding like this. So、yep. that that should be a thing. That could be a thing. Yes, and when you host the small weddings, you actually want even more、uh, nice pictures because then you're gonna share them with other people you couldn't invite. So、mm-hmm. it, so a lot of people say that、mm-hmm. yeah, well, photographer will they lose job for now? Yes, because yes. people postponing and but, canceling. I got a couple of cancellations can- too. Yeah. Yeah, but. Eventually, people still need to get married, and no, one of things. A couple they, of my they, couples, they actually canceled. They said they don't actually want to have a, a wedding. They just want to have like a private、uh, ceremonial wedding at City Hall, and then just yeah. But did they want pictures? Oh yeah, they definitely want pictures. So yeah, it won't be an event, but it'll be like a, a I, different. I feel like、time. the most impact、yeah. just within the wedding industry is、yeah. the venues themselves. The venues. Oh shoot. They get in at the most. Ouch! Yeah, those venues. They make so much money, but now they're gonna be losing so much money. Because no one's coming back to them anytime soon,、no. and they have to keep it rent or unless they own their own place. But still, they can't make money off it because no one will host a huge wedding with like four, five hundred people in those、or、places. Or conferences, <laughs> right? Because that's that's you think of it, it's big money, but it's also a required revenue stream. If they don't have that revenue stream, they can't pay to maintain. That property, they simply can. So I don't know if they're gonna even survive this. We're gonna have a lot of bankrupt wineries, bankrupt、uh, conferences, city hall, diff- different、uh, big venues. It's it's. Hey, we have a、sad. comment. Oh, hey, let's check out the comment. You can actually see the comment, or the. It's very tiny on my phone, so if you can、oh, read it, that's、yeah. fine. Yeah, <laughs> I'll pop it up right now. So this is、um, Kenji San. Hey Kenji, huh? Yeah. So he says, "I'm not interested in the Adobe ecosystem since they've adopted a subscription model. Can you suggest an editing program compar- comparable to Lightroom that can be just purchased and paid flat out?" Well, we just talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I would suggest try using Skynom's、uh, Numina Four. It is a program in between Photoshop and Lightroom, and I think you will enjoy. It's much easier. Use the learning curve is almost to zero, honestly.、Uh, it's a one-time charge, less than a hundred bucks. You own the software, you get free update, but they will come up with new software that you might have to repurchase. But then, by just Numina Four, they come up the newest 4.2 versions. It comes with the AI、um, sky replacement and the AI. Uh, portrait we touch, so I think that's more than enough for you to do anything with your photos right now. Yeah. It, so give five. Yes,、uh, agreed.、Um, and I want to add to it too because it allows like what what Ken, Ken Kenji what what was what were you using the Adobe ecosystem for? Like, were you using Lightroom? Were you using Photoshop only, or what, how were you using both? I think he's using Lightroom. Okay. He mentioned about. Lightroom, so yes,、yeah. you mentioned it's a Lumina Four by its standalone version. It、yes. has a library just like Lightroom is. Yes,、uh, it might be slightly slightly less, but you have to adapt to it. But at least you don't have to pay a monthly. Yes, you can also do the same thing like synchronize all image to、um, the preset, which in Lumina they call it the look. And you could basically copy all the look to all the other pictures, just、mm-hmm. like how Lightroom can synchronize. So it works the same way. Yeah, and actually, it works better too because if you watch some of our other videos where we go in, in depth, yeah, check in, out our video. Yeah, in depth in what Lumina Four does, basically, it has all the user friendliness and the easy workflow that you find in Lightroom. But it actually brings in all the power and flexibility that normally you have to go to Photoshop for. But now it brings it all into 
a platform that's easy to use like Lightroom and you can manipulate things with just sliders. You don't even have to worry about masking, but it does masking for you. So you can actually, for example, brighten up the person but not worry about messing up the architecture. Or at the same time, you can enhance the look of the architecture without messing up the skin of the people. So it's really powerful in that. And the price is amazing. It's under $100. Um, if you want, check out the link below uh, on Amazon or if you go to our YouTube channel, there's also a coupon code there so you can get a little discount as well. Um, it's, it's a really good program. And in fact, they have a 30-day uh, money-back guarantee too. So no subscription. Uh, yeah. 30 day money back guarantee. So try it out. If you don't like it, you can get a refund, but it's totally worth it. Like we use it day in and day out as professionals. Um, you can use it right away as a standalone, or if you want to, you can use it as a plugin. But like you said, you want to get out of the ecosystem. So you don't want to use it as a plugin. You just use it as a standalone, and you should be pretty happy with it. Anything oh, else yeah. you want to add? I'm happy with it. No. You got me at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the, so with our joint answer, Kenji, do we answer it all? Uh, yeah, he had a question. Let me let me see what. Um, let me bring this up. So he also mentioned, "Thank you for your your suggestion. I don't mm -hmm. mind paying a hundred plus dollar for good software. I guess I'm just old school and want to own the program once I pay." You know what? Yeah, you the same can design. I mean, yeah. when they when Adobe first changed to a subscription um, model, I was like, yeah. what? Uh, you know, I wasn't happy about it. You know, I bought yes. every single um, PS version, like from 5.0 to 6 to CS, you know, so on and so on. And then suddenly they changed the subscription. I was like, what? I got And then I was, cal it looks like cheaper, right? Monthly? Then I added, I was like, wait a minute. This doesn't <laughs> make sense. Hold on, I gotta pay way more? So yeah. I gotta keep working and pay for the subscription. So I was unhappy too. Yeah. But, you know, it is, in, well, what they did, they, they have a reputation in building so long, become like a standard, um, standard of the industry. Mm -hmm. But there's a more and more software development out there. And basically, there's a lot of alternatives. Just like Numenor over here is a very good alternative for Photoshop and Lightroom right now. Yeah. For, definitely for sure and you know it, it the, the model i guess it makes sense but ultimately it's going to make them more money and it's going to take more money away from us um mm -hmm. if we plan on using the software for a long time and of course as a photographer when you buy photoshop you plan to use it for a long time as long as you're going to keep shooting right so in the beginning yeah it's 30 bucks a month and it's much cheaper than paying for a 600 software or maybe even Lightroom was like, I think it was $300 or something, right? But then two months or six months in, you're already paying like almost close to what you would be paying for one uh, permanent license, right? It, it adds up really fast. It's only advantage to people that, okay, they're going to try photography, they'll buy a subscription and they'll cancel it after a month because they don't end up using it. Although funny thing is, those people might even forget this cancel. So they might be charged several months without them using it too, right? So yeah. That's all that's. Yeah, so we are all on the same page as you, Kenji san. Totally agree. I don't like paying subscription either, but unfortunately with the Adobe ecosystem, I'm paying for it um, because I use their software to make money. I use Adobe Premiere. I use Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, some anime, uh, some After Effects. I have to, but when I do use softwares that I don't have to pay subscription, I love it so much. Like um, I use Final Cut Pro, which is Adobe Premiere equivalent for Mac, right? I think uh, I wish I, they made for PC. Yeah, it's amazing software. Unfortunately, it's only for Mac. I, I can't remember even what the price is. I paid three hundred dollars, but that was ten years ago, and it's been updating all every year for the last ten years, and it still works right now. It has a ton of features, and I only paid one time. 300 bucks so if i were to pay you know, a, a, that's a good old day huh you buy yeah. something that you own it yeah now you just like you're leasing something some from some company yeah Ugh. that's the cloud okay, model this, this is kind of tell how old i am now <laughs> we're all around the same age <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for your question good good, good question kenji son hopefully we answer your question let us know if you have other questions yeah. oops i closed our logo instead of closing his chat <laughs> where's our logo Let's put back our logo. Yay! We got our logo back. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, awesome. um, I think well, that I think my time's almost up, right? Yeah, that pretty much wraps up our Ask Us Anything. Hopefully, you guys got a chance to hear us ask questions between each other. Um, thank you, Kenji-san, for asking questions. And I think some of your questions also came from the Facebook group 
uh, that you posted. So we look forward to having more questions in the future. So if you guys have questions, always feel free to leave them in the comments below. Yeah, leave a comment and we will answer them if we can. Yeah, or join in the next Ask Us Anything. We plan to have yep. this as an ongoing series, especially with this pandemic health issues, as, especially when new cameras are launched, new lenses are out, new ways to photograph, and new ways to take business to the next level. There's always stuff to talk about and we don't want to structure anything because we want it to flow naturally like a conversation. So And we fight a lot, so please forgive us. <laughs> that's why we are pizza stabbers. But we, we have our own opinion and we're sure you have your own opinion too and that's why we like to debate about it because at the end of it, uh, we're all doing it for business or our own hobby but we all have our own opinion. So, Oh, I'm here to vent. I'm oh, just yeah. here. <laughs> hey, and no one's right and no one's wrong. We always talk. So, any, yep. any last word before we wrap up, Jeremy? Um, well, let's please subscribe us so that you know when we're going to do this next. Mm -hmm. And we would love to answer your questions rather mm -hmm. than questions that other people come up So, drop us some questions that we, you'd like us to answer mm -hmm. or curious or we could just fight about it, debate. You want to see us fight? Drop us some questions. <laughs> yeah, give us some <laughs> controversial questions. And so yes, we can I, have like some fun. I like to talk yeah. about that. Yeah, we love to talk about it. Stuff. It's fun. Yep, yep. Well, our time <laughs> is up for today. We had a great time streaming. Thank you for watching. If you're watching this on Rerun, thank you for that too. Like the video mm -hmm. and subscribe if you haven't done already. Yeah. We're on YouTube at youtube.com slash pixelstabbers. We're going to have our website up soon at pixelstabbers.com where we write blogs, we have tutorials, and we have a lot of things coming out, so check us out on there too. But again, thank you for your time. Uh, hopefully you have a great day, have a great evening, and be healthy and be safe. And we'll see you guys next yes, time. All right, safe. adios. All right. Bye. Thanks for watching. Yep. Bye, bye. We're gonna sign out. So we're gonna sign out of Amazon first, and we yes. are gonna sign out of YouTube.